Okay. So let's go go back. Uh, do you have any questions about? Uh, can you listen me? Daniel, tá me ouvindo? Yes, I'm listening. Okay. So do do you have any questions about the these things that we have seen? Of course, we are. Uh, I'm trying to give you the information uh, that is useful for those who are going to use red simulation again. Of course, if one day you're going to write the equations and write a simulator or work in, at CMG or Schlumberger, to, to, you have to understand more deeply all these subjects. But here, the, the objective of this course is just to give you an introductory explanation of these things. So you can use the rest of our simulation knowing a little bit better what is inside the, the, the equations, how they are solved the equations, what are the important points, okay? So in, in the first part of this class today, the important things are the, the grid is very important. So you have to select the grids are more suitable for your floods. And uh, as small as possible to preserve better the characteristic of the reservoir and so on. But not too small, because if you, your simulation takes too many days to run, then it's not going to be useful to apply as you are applying your, your projects to reservoir forecast and so on. And the same thing happens with the time step, which is automatic, but you have to be careful uh, because the user have to put the maximum variation in pressure and saturation. Always check the material balance to see if your numerical part solution is OK. And the same thing is about the implicit and IM and impasse method. Uh, to, today, I recommend you to use IM method in, in every simulator you can. For example, in the project, you are, you, you are using the, the IMAX, and IMAX has this option. If you are curious about it, just change it from implicit to impasse to IM and check the solution and the quality. Uh, in general, the IEM is faster and with a good quality solution. Okay, uh, a few years ago, we did a project to Petrobras testing all these options. We are comparing IMAX against eclipses and against a, 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 a internal Petrobras reservoir simulation, and we use all these options. And IEM was the most useful tool we, we could yes, use there because the, the time step was much. Uh, the, the Total time was much uh, better, including these options, than all the other options we could use, OK? OK, so once we talk about the time step, the grid, and this, uh, the solution, how we solve it, one uh, of the most important things you have to know as users of reservoir simulation is how to treat wells, OK? And although it sometimes looks simple, uh, it's not so simple. It's a little bit complex. We, have, we are going to see that we have to treat the wells differently in the past and in the future. Uh, as, as we have seen, uh, in, in João told you more about the future, and Célio told you more, more about the past. Uh, and both our projects have a little bit of past and future. So every time you are going to do run a simulator in a company, you have a past that you have simulated and, and do a history machine, and you're going to have a future that you have to for do a forecast. So you're going to have to treat the wells in both ways. We're going to show a little bit about that. And also, and the well is, uh, uh, is have a complex geometry, and it's very complex to model in the simulator. And it is very important. Again, I told you this two or three times already. If you have a for example, a complex reservoir, and I have a well here, well here. Uh, doesn't matter if you put a million blocks or a thousand blocks only here. If you have, uh, at the end, what we're really measuring to do a reservoir production forecast, to do a risk analysis or history matching, you are measuring the, measuring the amount of fluid that's coming into the well, in the producer, or going into the well in the injector. Okay. So if your well model is wrong, it doesn't matter that you're simulating everything very fine here, your grid is okay, everything's okay. If you have a wrong well model, then you are accounting for a wrong uh, amount of fluid that's 
uh, going in and out of the reservoir. So your solution is, is wrong uh, from the beginning. So it's very important to treat well the best way we can. Okay, so it, these are important measures for you. If there is one thing that you have to be very careful when you do simulation is the well behavior and well treatment and well assimilation, well data assimilation and so on. Okay. So here I'm going to show you first how we treat the wells in the simulator, how we select them, and how we treat this well in the past and in the future. Okay. So the well is treated in the simulations as a source term. Of course, there are some simulators that treat the well uh, as, uh, as part of the solutions, as we can see. For example, here I have a two blocks, block one and block two. And of course, I have flux from block one to block two that is proportional to the transmissibility of one, two, and proportional to the potential of block one and two. As I assume here, I have an injector and here a producer, for example. So when I looked into this block here, uh, I could treat the well as part of the equations and solutions as we are going to do. But I'm going to treat this well as additional equations, only including this as a source term. This source term can put our mass into the block as an injector, for example, here, or can take a mass of the block as a producer, but always as a sort term. And as we're going to see, each well will add one equation, uh, one additional equation at most in, in our uh, solutions per well. Okay. And we also assume that this mass that's going in and out of the block is distributed throughout the, the, the block. Okay. So the the S we have seen in the equations, the amount of fluid that's going in or out of, of the, the, the block through the well is a function of the pressure of the well and pressure of the block and, and the properties of the well and the block, okay? But as we have flux from well, from block to block, as we're gonna see here, we have flux also from well to block. And if you know the uh, well pressure that normally we call this bottom hole pressure uh, that we're going to explain a little bit, what is that? And, and block pressure, if I know the block pressure and if I know the well pressure, I want to write an equation similar to this one where the well is a function of these two pressures that tries to take into account the amount of fluid that's going in and out of the block, okay? And of course, this well model will depend on the geometry, will depend on the properties next to the wells. For example, if it's in a high permeability block, it's going to have a higher productivity and so on. And also a function of iteration of other wells and so on, and perforation in, in, in what block it's, it is completed. Okay. And we are going to show how is this model built into the reservoir simulation. Uh, there is one complex thing that, for example, even for a Cartesian block, for example, here's a, a, a very simple model with four blocks, uh, five blocks. Block zero is the well, is the block where we have the well, and the neighbors are block one, two, three, and four. Okay. So as we know, the, as we have seen in the reservoir engineering classes, or if you're not there, assume that this equation is known here. We, we have a, 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 an equation that governs the, the flux and well. We are going to assume that this uh, flux here will follow this equation, which is an equation that gives uh, uh, the flux from, from the reservoir into the well, assuming that the well is a, a linear or a vertical well is like this. So the flux will be horizontal like this. Or we have a horizontal well like this, and the flux will be vertical like this. Here to explain, of course, we can have an inclined well and so on, but let's assume we have one of these two options here. And let's assume that the flux is uh, cylindrical to this. So we, in either of these two equations, we are going to follow two situations. We have 
we're going to follow this equation. The pressure of the block minus the pressure of the well, or, or the rate is a function of the difference in pressure and difference in mobility and difference in logarithm of the, the radius, okay? So inverting this, I can write the equation that the pressure of the block is a function of pressure of the well uh, times the rate of the well, the properties of the block, and the, the logarithm of the, the ratio. So I can write this as a function of, uh, of the block zero. So in this case, we have R0 that I'm going to explain what, what is the meaning of R0 here. But R0 is the position where the pressure is P0, okay, which is the pressure of the block. And why we don't consider exactly in the middle? Because uh, the, we, we have this pressure here, and P0 is obtained in, in, at this point here. This should be a little bit more. Clear. So here, here, I have P0. If I go through here, here is R0, OK? So in this model, we, ha we are following this equation. We have the, the pressure uh, of the well, the pressure of the block, the radius, and the radius of the block, OK? And the rate of the well. So if you are going to follow this, we are going to have this equation here. We can write the, the rate of the well as a function of the, the pressures and a function of the properties of the block. Okay. If you're not too familiar with this equation here, you can read some of the books, also our reservoir engineering books. But this is the equation we use using Darcy's law for a cylindrical uh, equations like this, radio equations like this. So the, assuming that the, the flux is going into a vertical horizontal well like this, okay? So the basic, very basic model we can write for this well is that in the, considering that we have flux from these blocks to these blocks, for example, from, from blocks one, two, three, and four to block zero, and this flux will be produced by well zero here, uh, adding the flux of these four blocks is the same as the flux of the well, okay? So we're going to write these equations to uh, get to these equations here. And to get to this radius here, we use these simplifications here to calculate this R0, because we don't know exactly the R0. We know the size of the block, which is this size here. but in these equations, we have to calculate the radius where the pressure is exactly P0. If you assume that the pressure has this behavior here, for example, the pressure is low where we are producing, and it's increasing through the boundary. And there is one point here where we have R0 and P0, okay? So if these equations is, is okay, which is normally okay, we have in the simulators to calculate R0. And there are several ways in the literature to uh, showing different R zeros, different calculations R zero. This is the simplest one we we have, which is called Pisman method, where R zero is a function of the size of the block. And so it's about zero point two zero weight of the size of the block. So if you have a hundred meters block, this R zero will be uh, twenty meters uh, point eight. Okay. Of course, this is a simplification, but there are other simplifications that we're going to show that at the end we have to calibrate this well model, and this is not a very uh, big simplification. So uh, I'm not talking too much about this R0, but there are several papers in the literature starting from the 17s uh, until today, until to, um, maybe today is not too much because uh, about the years 2000, close to 2000, we, we don't have too many papers anymore trying to calculate this R0 because they know how to calculate it already. So, but there are still several things. For example, Pismo did a lot of numerical experiments showing that numerically the best way to calculate R0 is 0 0.2. Then he showed a very exact solution for a very 
partition block and uh, showing that is almost the same number here. That we have solutions where the grid is not exactly the same size in the x and y direction, showing that you have this r0 here, which if x and y are, are equal, will converge to this solution. Uh, then we show that if the permeability changes in different directions in x and y, for example, we have also to take that into account. So we have this formula here, which is very common used. And and we have some other solutions showing that uh, there are some analytical solutions when the, uh, the, the grid is not exactly the same size in both directions. We have some other expressions here. And finally, we have one uh, expression here for Voronoi or, or other types of grid. That's a function of uh, a complex grid. I put this formula just to show that if you have a, a grid that's very complex, we have to calculate our, our, our R0, that is also very a function of this grid. Why I'm not spending too much time about this? Because the difference between 0 0.208 here, 0 0.2, 0 0.19, or these other solutions, they will more or less give you the same numbers. And we also uh, have other things to consider in the well model. So, this is a very good approximation already, so we don't have to do too many things about that. And also, it's inside the simulator. We don't know how to select that, okay? So the important thing that you have to know Ed, is that the simulator follows these rules, okay? Follow this equation, and the, the rate will be proportional to the difference between the, the, block, the block pressure, which we call uh, P0, and then we calculate R0 exactly where this block pressure occurs. And the well pressure, what we call bottom hole pressure normally, uh, which is the, the pressure at the, the bottom of the, the reservoir. Of course, this can change a little bit from block to block here. We're going to see in a while, but this, uh, the, we, this is the bottom hole pressure we consider. Okay. okay. In order to have the same treatment for wells and blocks, the simulator also called this relationship between this thing, transmissibility, okay? But in, in the case of wells, we call this productivity and injectivity. So it's the set, it's the same type of equations. So the well transmissibility, which will be productivity for producers and injectivity for in injectors, and uh, this is the term that accounts for the facility that we have to produce or inject in a particular block, okay? And again, it's the same equations as we use for from flux from block to block. The, the, transmiss the, the well uh, rates are a function of this transmissibility, which is productivity and injectivity, as we're going to see, and function of the different potential between the block and the, and the well. Okay, and this transmissibility will have more or less the same format after, as we have uh, in the block from block rates, but considering these equations here, okay? So consider this equation here. The transmissibility of the well is of course proportional to the permeability. If you have a higher permeability, you have a higher productivity and injectivity. It's proportional to the, the size of the block. In this case here is the, is the height of the block is proportion of the viscosity of the fluid as we have seen so this is the mobility we have and it follows the our rule the, the radial flow to the well considering also the skin okay if you don't know what's the skin let please let me know but we have to consider also in in our solutions here so at the end we have uh, the well rates are proportional to this transmissibility of the wells and the potential we have to to move the fluids and this transmissibility of the wells are also a function of the geometry that we call well index in our case and this is an important term because this is one term that sometimes you have to inform to the simulator okay and this is the mobility of the phase. So the facility that uh, the, I have, the, the mobility of the fluid is proportional to the geometry, which is the well index, 
the permeability is also included, and the mobility of the phase, okay? So if you compare these two equations, we can calculate the well index as this term here. So the well index is proportional to this. If you don't inform the well index to simulator, the simulator will use exactly this equation here to calculate your well index. It's going to take the permeability of your block, the size of your block, the rate, radius of the well, the R0, which is calculated from the 0 0.2 of the size, or we're going to use any of these solutions here. Uh, it's going to be function also of this scheme, and it's going to calculate the OL index, okay? And once, let's assume that I have the bottom hole pressure. Once I, I reach the solution, if you remember, our main variables are pressures and saturations. When I reach the solution, I have the pressure, so I can calculate this difference in pressure. I know the pressure and saturation, so I can calculate this transmissibility. So I can calculate the well rates, okay? And the rates will follow exactly this, this equation, okay? And there are two ways to do it. You can let the simulation calculate the well index, or you can inform the well index or the productivity index as we can show productivity or injectivity okay uh, we're gonna talk about this in a few minutes but if you don't say anything about the simulator if you don't have any keyword in your simulator talking about this the simulator you will use exactly this equation okay any question okay so once we have the reservoir let's assume there and I put a well, for example, injector here and a producer here. Uh, this uh, well, remember that these wells will be boundary conditions for the reservoir, okay? And we have two types of boundary conditions that we can select in the reservoir simulators. We can impose pressure for the wells or we can impose uh, rates. For example, if you have a, a system like this, let's assume that we have a well, has a reservoir here, then we are going here, then we are going to the platform, as João showed you. I, let's assume that I have the pressure here in the platform, I can calculate the pressure in the well, I can calculate the bottom hole pressure here, and I'm producing as much fluid as I can. So my boundary conditions I'm gonna use is the bottom hole pressure. Okay, or if you are integrating with production facilities as you will use it, I can uh, inform you the wellhead pressure here, calculate this difference in pressure in, the, in these facilities here, and then impose the bottom hole pressure to the well. Okay, but let's assume you're gonna work with bottom hole pressure, which is a little bit simpler. Okay, so the bottom hole pressure is the PW, which is the well pressure. Okay. So when I say that we can have pressure boundary conditions or rate boundary conditions, I can have any boundary conditions. For example, in these situations I inform you, I'm specifying pressure boundary conditions. So if I'm specifying pressure boundary conditions and I have this equation here, remember that once I solve the equations in the blocks, I have the well blocks. So if I go from the beginning of the time step, to the end of the time step, and I have P0 and SW and SG, for example. If I have the rates and saturations, I can calculate the pressure, I can calculate the transmissibility. The pressure of the well is a boundary condition given to the, uh, to the simulator, so I have this one. Once I have this, this, and this, I can calculate the rates. So I can calculate the oil rates, the water rate, and the gas rates, okay? So this is the simplest boundary conditions we can have for the simulator, okay? But there are other conditions that we can uh, happen. For example, let's assume that I have a limited amount of oil that I can uh, treat in the platform. And if I produce uh, this well in this boundary condition, the rate will be, for example, 10,000 cubic meters. 
but the maximum amount I can uh, treat in the platform is eight, for example, 8,000. So if I have this situation, I'm gonna have a vow here or in place here, for example, a choke, right? And I'm gonna close this choke and limit it the boundary condition to 8,000 cubic meter, which is the most I can treat in the platform, for example. I can have this, this situation uh, in several occasions. I can limit the amount of water or gas or liquid or oil and so on. So in this situation, the simulation will know that I reach the max, maximum amount of platform rates. So instead of imposing the, the pressure as boundary condition, I'm going to impose the limit of uh, amount of oil. So I have to solve the equations knowing that my new boundary condition is this one. So how I solve this in this way? So it's, uh, it's almost the same thing, but as we know, block pressure and saturation pressures, we know this one, but we don't know the pressure in the well, right? But we can calculate this and we know this oil oil rates if i know the oil rates i calculate the pressure okay by using this equation and if i know the pressure then i calculate the other rates right so instead of calculating all the equations for pressure and solving for rates i'm going to use the rates to calculate pressure and the pressure to calculate the other rates uh, as you can compare here that's, 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 too much complex. Uh, if the oil rates is like this, if the water rate is, is, is like this, and if the gas rate is like this, oh sorry, here's the key. Of course, this term here is common, right? So I can compare this uh, rate div divided by the transmissibility and divided by the, and the, the potential should be equal to the rates. So again, if you know the well uh, rates, oil rates, I can use this to calculate pressure and then calculate the others. If I know, for example, the water rate is my limit, I can use the water rate as a limit, calculate the pressure, and then calculate the others. Is the gas rate my limit? I can use this to calculate pressure and so on. So I use these equations all the time in the wells, and it would be very simple if we have a completion of a single block, because in a completion in a single block, I know exactly the pressure. Knowing the pressure, I can calculate the rates. If I know exactly the rate, I calculate the pressure based on this equation and then I calculate the other rates, okay? So, uh, so, so this is the, the way we do. And for, as we are solving numerically, sometimes we add a residual equations for the, ray, for the wells. And my residual equation will be exactly here. For example, if my uh, oil rate is specified, for example, my water, uh, sorry, my well pressure will be my new unknown, and I have to converge this to zero, okay? Or my equation is this residual here, and I have to converge this to zero. So I, I'm using, again, the newton halfson I know that the, the pressure in the well has to be the pressure that was specified, or if I know the rates, the rate in the well is the rate that has been specified, and I add this equation, which is a residual equation. And instead of solving only pressure and saturation for the blocks, I also solve for pressure of the well here. Okay. And I have to uh, an additional equation for each well. I have to solve the problem. Of course, if I have a, a single block, I don't have to do this because I already know the rates and the pressure. But I, if I have a multiple completion like this, which is most much more common, right? If a well is completed in several layers, then I have to use this additional equation because I'll, although, for example, I know that the oil rate is the amount of rate that is being produced by the oil, I don't know how much is coming from each block. So I'm adding this additional equation to solve for this as well. 
The same thing, I don't know the pressure exactly in all the blocks, so I have to solve for this pressure. So the simulator includes for all the wells one additional equation, and this additional equation will try to solve one of these two, depending on the boundary condition I'm imposed, and try to solve for this addition. So at the end, in the conversion of the newton hapson equation, of course, my pressure will be equal to the, to the pressure that was specified. So let a second. Or my rate will be exactly as the rate that was specified. So if I keep solving for pressures and, and saturations of the block, and the pressure of the well and rates of the well, I think I'm going to converge for residuals equal to zero in the blocks, and also the residuals equals to zero in the wells, okay? So in an example here, I have a well completed in three blocks. So I have uh, pressure of the block one, pressure of block two, pressure of block three, I'm gonna have a rate that's proportional to the difference. I'm gonna have a rate here that's proportional to this difference. And I'm gonna have a difference here that's proportional to this difference here. So I'm gonna have three rates here that will be added to the, to the total rate here that's being produced for the web, okay? So in a single completion, it's a little bit simpler. In, a, in a multiple completions, it's a little bit more complex. And if I do this, let me pick, pick an example here. For example, I can add here a reference. So this is the P reference, which is the BHP you inform for the simulator, okay? So always when I inform pressure for as a boundary conditions for the reservoir, I'm informing this uh, bottle hole pressure as a, as a boundary condition. But I have to inform also the, the reference that I'm considering. I'm considering for this. For example, if you don't inform anything, it will assume that is the block, the highest block I have. So I'm going to assume that this is the reference. So if you inform for the simulation, my BHP is, I don't know, a thousand PSI, then I'm gonna have exact, exactly this pressure here in the first block. And then I have to calculate the pressure here and here that I, I can use any of these. I can use a hydrostatic pressure loss here. I can use a function of uh, the densities of the phases, for example, I can use a, a correlation, multiphase for correlation to calculate this. But once I have a, a BHP for one uh, reference block, then I have to calculate the BHP for the other blocks. Okay. And once I have the BHP for the other blocks here, the block pressures, then I can use these equations to calculate the rates. Okay. So if I have a single block completions, this pressure here is exactly the BHP we are informing. If I have a multiple completions, this is the default simulation, this is the BHP we are informing, and the others are calculated using any of these simplifications here. The most common one is this one, that using only the hydrostatic loss, for example, here, if you have here, we take the amount, account the, the amount of uh, the fluid that's here, the, the weight of this fluid. So that this pressure will be a little, will be this pressure plus the column is a stratic column of this one. And this one will be uh, a little bit higher because it's the, it's the static column of this one and so on. Okay? What's important for you is that once I inform the BHP, I can calculate the other pressures, well pressures, and once I have the other well pressures, I go back to this equation and I calculate the rates, okay? Yeah. That, that it, was it clear? Okay. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know. Here I'm giving an example of one uh, block. I'm always, I'm always giving a 2D example because it's, it's easier to show, okay? But this is an example of 20 blocks. 
and I have a producer well that's completed in blocks one, two, three, and four, right? So, of course, if I don't have a well, my solution, as I remember, would be we'd have uh, 60 unknowns and 60 equations, right? The 60 equations will be the equations for oil, water, and gas uh, mass balance for all the 20 blocks, three equations per block. And my unknowns will be pressure and saturations for each block, which is 20 times three, 60 equations, okay? Now that we have our equations, we're gonna have this, which is a little bit, uh, a little bit more complex. We're also gonna have the well equations, which, which is this one, and the well pressure, which is this unknown. So here again, we, we have the equations for block one. So we have three equations per block. Remember, this x here is a three by three matrix, okay? And then, my, my matrix that I have to solve will be like this. The X are the points where we have the neighbor blocks. Of course, if I one is neighbor of block two, as I'm showing here, and neighbor of block five, we have this here, we have this here, and we have this here, okay? But as we have the well that is connecting block one, two, three, and four here, because let's assume that I'm specifying the rates here, for example. Then the total rate here, I know, but I don't know the amount of rates here. So I have to control these rates of the blocks in order the total rates to be the, the, the one that I have specified. So once I do this, the properties of block four will, will now influence in the rates of block one. That's why I have now these terms here because block three and four are now connected to block one, okay? Block one and three are here connected. They are all connected here. And also, they are connected to the well equations. That's why we have in the pressure here, the pressure, well pressure will influence on the material balance of the, of the blocks one, two, three, and four. As we have seen, it's completed in these three blocks. So we're gonna influence the, the well term will influence in the equations of block one, three, and four. And the equations for, for the well will also be a function of the properties of, uh, of uh, the, the block, the pressure and saturations for one, three, three, and four, okay? Uh, that's why we have this uh, matrix, which is now a matrix of, as a function of the grid size and a function of the well completions in the reservoir, okay? And of course, the rates here will be added all together to be the rate of well. And of course, if you have an injector here that completes block 17 and 18, we're gonna have the same thing here. We're gonna have a, an additional well two here and a well two here and an additional equation that will connect block 17 and 18 and so on and so forth, okay? Was that clear? I'm talking fast, but if you have any questions, please let me know, okay? Uh, here, uh, that was our, what I was talking about. Uh, normally, when I inform the BHP, I also have to inform a, a reference depth or, or the Z here, Z reference, right? Because I inform this here. If you don't inform this reference, the simulator uses this as the reference which is this is the, the center of the highest block we have completed, okay? Uh, I'm talking about IMAX. Maybe other simulators have other defaults. Be careful about, about that. But IMAX uses this default, okay? And of course, as Juan told you, I can inform also the, the pressure in the wellhead pressure, for example. And it's the same thing, instead of informing this or this and informing this thing. So I have to calculate the difference in pressure here, the difference in pressure here, and here and here, to calculate the pressure uh, here to calculate these rates. But once I have these pressures calculated, uh, these and these and these, I use these equations to calculate the, the rates, okay? So it's, it's simple, but of course, uh, as we have multiple combi completions, we have to add one equations because we don't know exactly the, the rates here. We have to 
put these variables in an iterative procedure in order to converge. So the simulator will converge not only for pressure and saturations of the blocks, but also for the pressure of the well or rate of the well, depending on if I specify pressure or saturations, okay? If it's a vertical well, yeah, geometry is like this. And if it's a horizontal well, the geometry is like this. Uh, if it's exactly horizontal, I don't have any difference in depth. So the, the pressures will be the same. But as the horizontal wells are very, uh, they, they, uh, are much uh, bigger than the horizontal, the vertical wells, sometimes we have to consider the pressure drop here. If you have, if, as we are flowing flux from this to this, normally the pressure will change from block one to block three and block four. So the default of the simulator is to use the same pressure because they are the same height. But sometimes the simulator allows us to calculate the different pressures. As we, we are moving from here, we have the friction loss in the wells, so we have different bottom hole pressures in these different four points here. But using one model or the other, the equation for the blocks are the same. Once I have this and I have the pressure of the block, I calculate the rates. And once I calculate the rates, I can add all together to inform the total rate here. Okay? Was that clear? So this is what I was uh, talking to you about the well geometry and the well models. Now I'm going to show you how to treat these models, okay? Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna uh, give an example of the, uh, oh, sorry, uh, ah, okay. Here's an, an example. Uh, ah, I'm gonna give you an example of the IMAX, but I put uh, everything here, including the other keywords. Uh, but I'm, I think I'm gonna jump here just to go to the well, then I come back. So the, the well treatment uh, have many details, right? Uh, that you have to read a manual carefully of the simulator you are using to see how to treat these details, okay? I'm gonna talk of some of these details here, but be careful because each simulator has different keywords and different details, okay? The first one is the treatment of groups. For example, we can sometimes have group of wells. For example, we, we can have manifolds producing to the, Wells producing to the same manifold, and then the manifold producing to the platform. And sometimes we don't have the rate of each individual well, but we have the rate in the platform or rate in the, the manifold and so on. So the, the simulator can group the wells into groups and to, that can represent any facility you have. For example, a manifold or a platform and so on. It's useful in two situations where you want to inform this as a boundary condition, or when you want to uh, know, to, when you want to calculate uh, the, these group rates and group pressures in order to do something to understand how much of the fluid is coming from one manifold or another, or one platform and another, and so on. Okay. Uh, the geometry of the well is very complex, also, as we have seen, but we have to treat this uh, very carefully according to the manual of the simulator. We have to read how is the, they consider the geometry of the well. There are some things that I didn't talk about but are important. For example, if the well is in the center of the block or if it is in the corner of the block, the productivity will change a little bit. So it's a function of position in the block, okay? Uh, the boundary conditions, we talk a little bit, and I'm going to talk a little bit more how to treat these boundary conditions for the past and for the future. The productivity or injectivity is also important. I show you the formula. The skin also important to be included because most of the wells is, uh, is an important thing. Local refined amount can be usable. Uh, treatment of new blocks, uh, this is another thing important when the wells are are completed in, in blocks that have zero porosity. Uh, each simulator treats it differently, but normally when we have zero porosity, we don't have uh, production. Uh, it's, if it's a new block, the completion, if you have a completion in a new block, the simulator will 
we will inform you because it can be a mistake. Uh, of course, if if it's a new block, it will be very strange for the company to complete. Uh, well, if, if for example, it has a block that has zero permeability, it will be very strange. So the simulator gives you a message saying that you have a completion in a new block, just to make sure you're not doing uh, the wrong thing. Okay. And we also can have a partial perforation. For example, if the block is like this, and I have a perforation is in just part of the block, we have a formula that calculates the productive index, uh, knowing that the block is not like this, right? This is the default, where the, where it's perforated in all the blocks. Then we have radial flow year round, and then we use the formulas I show you. But in this situation, the the productivity index is lower than this one because it's just a partial completion, right? If it's a partial completion, we have to multiply by the amount of, uh, of the height that is completed. So we have to consider this also. And also a slope, for example, I, I told you the model for vertical wells or horizontal, but the, also the well can be inclined well. For example, if it's like this, we have also have to, to change the formula a little bit to account for that, okay? So there are a lot of details, so I recommend you to read very carefully the manual of the simulator you are using about all these things, how to use the geometry, how to change the IPs if the position is not in the center of the block, how to treat it as a boundary condition, uh, how to treat uh, skin and refinements and, and so on, okay? Uh, I'm not giving you all the details because we don't have time, but the, the manuals are normally very complete, uh, are very uh, detailed in, in all these things, okay? Okay, this I'm gonna talk in a few minutes, how we treat it in the history matching forecast behavior, the productivity I told you about. Uh, one important thing that I'm gonna talk about this is that, as you can see, the well models are very important and they, are approximate solutions, especially if you have conditions like this one, it's not in the center of the block, or it's inclined, or partial perforations. We have a well model that's a simplification. We don't have the exact radial flow and so on. So as we know that the well rates are important and the models are simplified, normally for wells that have uh, history data, it's very important for us to do a calibration of this productivity and injectivity. And if you have a well test, or if you have a few days of production, you can do that very accurately. So you, you measure the pressure. As we go here, the formula is this one, right? So if your well that's already existing in the, in the reservoir, we are gonna use this formula. Um, but if you have a history data, you have the pressure and the rates that could be measured from the well. So measuring the rates and measuring the pressure, we can put here in this form and calibrate the transmissibility or can calibrate the productivity and injectivity. So once we have data, if the well model is not very good, we can calibrate this model uh, using this exactly formula that we use to calculate the, the rates. In other words, if, if I, the history data shows that the productivity and activity that we are using don't give us the exact relationship between the pressure and rates that we are really measuring in the field, we have to calibrate this, this productivity, okay? This is very important for you to do if you have data. And data, in this case, is either a well test or, or a few days of production. So in the beginning of the life of the well, we already can measure the productivity and impose this to the simulator. That's why I told you a few slides before that in the, we can let the simulator calculate this formula here. This is the formula we are, that is the formula. We can uh, let the simulator calculate this formula. If you don't know anything about the wells, the simulator will calculate this. So it will use the, the size of the block, the permeability, the skin, the well the geometry, and calculate the R0 and calculate the, the well index. But if this is wrong, we are gonna calibrate this. And if you're gonna calibrate this, instead of calculating this, we are gonna replace this by the one we calculated from the test, okay? 
So if you have a well test or if you have a few days of production, we calculate the, this productivity injectivity. And there is a keyword that can be even, uh, each simulator has a different keyword. In the IMAX, we can use the, the for example, set PI. I don't know if you are using your model, but set PI is a keyword in the IMAX where we are setting the productivity index. So instead of letting the simulator calculate it, we use the productivity that we calculate from the past to impose to the simulator, okay? Uh, just to have, to have an idea, we have a, we are simulating a, a case in the Shell project where if the difference in the PI we are calculating and the one that's calculated by the simulator is, is in the order of five. So the rates are five times more in the simulator if we don't put this keyword set PI to impose this, this productivity to the well. So something is wrong in our model or either in the reservoir or in the well model that makes the, the rates be five times higher than the rates that we really have in the reservoir. So in the first day of production, we can measure this and then correct this this rate to, to the forecast, okay? So this is very important for you to do every time you have history data, either by a well test or by a few days of production, okay? Okay, then we, we can get, have group controls, field controls, these things, uh, I'm not giving too much details about that, but I thought I can, for example, impose, for example, the total rate of the platform Let's assume that I have total rate of platform that's 10,000 here and I'm producing two wells in the manifold. And I, I know that they're adding these rates of well one and well two, the maximum I can treat is 10,000. So instead of imposing the 10,000 for one well here, I'm imposing for two wells. So there are uh, several ways to control the rates and uh, imposing these group rates, for example. And uh, Danielle, that comes here, is. Uh, did a lot of this calculation in his dissertation, master dissertation, is still doing here, for example, because he's trying uh, his uh, thesis in, the, in development of the well controls. So when you have this type of situation that you are limited, you have to know how much the controls, uh, how much of the wells will be controlled. And this is very complex to understand. Maybe you, you have to do a special course of well treatment to understand. But it, it can be several controls that the, the user can control in several ways because in the platform we have a several ways to control. For example, if you have a, just one choke to control everything here, then we are, uh, for example, if the well one has potential of producing 10,000 and well two is, uh, is uh, let's just say here, 80,000, and here, well, two is uh, able to produce 12,000, for example. If we had 8,000 and 12,000, we would produce 20,000, but the platform can uh, treat only 10,000. So a way to do this is to close a choke here. This will produce four, which is half, and this will produce 6,000. So adding four and six, we are gonna produce 10,000. So this uh, is a way to do it. Uh, is the com most common way to do it. I just close a choke in the platform and I produce the, the amount. But of course, there are other ways. If I have individual controls here for wells, and let's assume, let's just simplify the, let's assume that again, we have a platform here producing 10, 10K here. And here has a potential to produce eight, K, and here potential to produce 12. But let's assume that here I'm producing only oil, and here I'm producing oil plus a water cut of 80%, for example. So, so I'm producing oil and water. So, so if I want to produce more oil and less water, it would be much wiser to control only this valve. So I keep producing 8,000 from this, which is producing only oil. And then I can produce, uh, close the choke here to produce only 2,000 of this one because this is producing much more water than this one. 
So it's, if I don't have individual controls, then I cannot do that. But if I have individual controls, then I can control uh, the shocks for each well, okay? And the same thing I can have in, in the reservoir, for example, when I have, well, multiple completions here, and I have what we call inflow control valves, which I think Jean told you a little bit about that, I'm not sure. But if I have these valves that I can control the valves inside the reservoir, it would be the same situation. Let's assume here I'm producing only oil, and here I'm producing oil plus water. And in some situation, I am limited in the amount of liquid or oil that I'm producing in the platform. So instead of controlling the whole well, I can control only the valve. So I'm gonna close this valve and not this one, so I can produce more oil and less water. So this is very complex, but for us, this is useful because if we have this flexibility to operate the wells or the valves, then I can manage the wells the best way I can. So the thesis, Daniel, thesis is about that. Other students in the scene and in the companies have this task is to control the wells the best way they can to reach a maximum objective function. In this case could be, for example, the maximum amount of oil produced from the wells, okay? So, uh, and this is the basic difference we have the, to treat wells in the past and in the future. Uh, the transitions must be smooth between them and the keywords, uh, change from one to another. For in the past, we know exactly what we produce. And in the future, we want to manage the well the best way we can. So in the past, we have a exact, uh, exact way it was produced. Of course, it depends on how much precise I, I measure each of these rates of the wells and valves and so on. But once I have this, I can impose the exactly boundary condition to the, to the reservoir. And of course, once I impose these exact boundary conditions for the reservoir, I, I am trying to honor these boundary conditions to, 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 to do the history match, right? And in the future, differently, I don't know the exact condition. I have to set a, a several keywords uh, to account for the way I'm gonna manage the reservoir, okay? So let's give an example here. Uh, in the history matching, for example, I have producer one here, and I'm imposing, for example, the rates as my boundary condition for the history matching. In this case, I'm imposing the what oil rate, okay? can be liquid rate or other, but normally we impose either the oil rate or the, oil, or the liquid rate. In this case, it's oil rate. So in the history, as we know that the, the well produced exactly a, a certain amount that was measured, in the simulator, I'm gonna input exactly that value. For example, in time step one, uh, 20,000, in time step two, uh, two 30 days, uh, 19,000, in time step two, or uh, two 60 days, this one, and so on. So I'm gonna impose the exact rates uh, we are gonna uh, measure in, in the resume. Once we impose the oil rates, we are gonna measure, uh, let's go back to the oil rates. Let's go there to the well equations where we have this, uh, this equation here. Once we impose the oil rate, for example, it was the, the rate that, uh, Uh, for example, in this case was oil rate, right? Once we impose the oil rate, we're gonna calculate the pressure and we're gonna compare this pressure that we calculated with the pressure that was measured, the BHP pressure, there, right? So if I input in the, for the simulator, the exact rate that was uh, measured, then I calculate the pressure using the reservoir simulation model. Then I, I compare to the rate, to the pressure that was measured in the real life. If it, this is too different from this one, uh, that means that the, my model is not good, right? So I have to change the transmissibility, change the block properties, change, 
things in the history matching procedure as some of you are doing in the in the project meaning that uh, if my pressure is not exactly the pressure that was measured either i have a, a problem in the measurement or i have a wrong model right so what assuming that i have the right pressure then in this situation i'm trying to i'm gonna have to try the model in order to improve the quality of the response and this is known by the history match or data simulation procedure and the same thing once i have the the right pressure measure here i can calculate the water rates the gas rates and the liquid rates and i'm going to compare these rates with the measure rates for water gas and oil and again if they are not exactly the same my model is wrong so i have to change the model change either the well model or the block properties or something is wrong in my model and i have to to calibrate this model in order to have the same behavior that we are measuring in the real life so again in the real life we are measuring oil rates uh, water rates gas rates liquid rate and pressure once I have all these measurements, I'm going to impose one of these boundary conditions to the reservoir. In this case, in the example I showed you, I'm, I'm going to impose the oil rates. Then I, I'm going to use the model to calculate the orders, and then I'm going to compare the orders to the, uh, to the measurements. And if they are different, then I have to change the model, which is exactly what we are doing if you are doing a history matching or data simulation projects. Okay? So this is how we treat the well in the in the in the past. Okay, I put an eventually here because one, this is a common mistake. I mistake I see from several students, even some common companies. Uh, once I know the oil rate, I have to impose exactly the oil rates. Okay, and the others uh, operation conditions normally don't have to be informed. I don't have to inform anything else, just the boundary conditions we are using to, to honor the data. Why sometimes we put this, for example? Uh, we put this exactly for this condition. Let's assume that let I, I have a well where I'm producing this 20,000 here. And by mistake, my well in the in the reservoir has a very small permeability, almost no flow here. So if I try to produce 20,000 cubic meters from the a block that has a very, very low permeability, what's going to happen to the, to the pressure here in the block? It's going uh, to, I, in order to have this very high, the rate, remember, is proportional to transmissibility and delta P, okay? In order to, to have this situation, it's gonna decrease too much the bottom hole pressure. Sometimes it's gonna go to bottom hole pressure that's so small that it's gonna have a convergence problems and a lot of problems in the simulator and so on. So in these situations, we put a minimum operation pressure here, but knowing that if I get to this minimum pressure, um, I have a wrong solution. And, and we're gonna see that showing that the imposed rate will not be honored. Okay, but forget a little bit about this because probably Sally told him about this, these conditions. I, I hope he told about this. Uh, normally, we don't have to do this if the, the model is not too wrong. Normally, we have to inform only this. Okay, for history data, history matching or data simulation, we inform the oil rates. Once you, we have the oil rate, we calculate pressure, we calculate the other rates, water, gas, and liquid. And then we compare this to the, to the boundary conditions that were given, and then we do the data simulation procedure, okay? Okay, what's the difference from this to the behavior dwells in the forecast mode? In the forecast mode, as we are talking, I don't know exactly how the well will be treated. I know more or less how the company will manage the well. For example, I know that if we have a maximum 20,000 of oil is the maximum amount I can treat in the platform. So I can add this, this uh, keyword saying that the maximum oil rate will be 20,000. But I know also that I don't want the 
the, the block to get below a certain point. If this happens, the company will decrease the, the, the oil rate. Or this is the max minimum pressure I can get uh, using the pumps I have and the and this facilities I have. The minimum I can reach is a thousand, for example. Then I have this minimum bottom hole pressure. And I can have other operate conditions here, several operation conditions, and these will be the conditions that I will have to impose to the rates. This is the restrictions we have to operate the wells. All the restrictions we have, we put in this, in these keywords here. And be very careful because several students and people in the company, I, I had one postdoc researcher that, uh, for during one year, he was uh, fighting with me in, in good words, saying that I was wrong in one thing. But uh, then we, we we could talk to people in CMG, and they confirmed that what I was talking about. Uh, remember this: uh, we always can input to the mathematical model of the simulators just one boundary condition. Okay. In the, in the past, it's obvious, it's the boundary condition we are imposing. But in the future, that's not so obvious. It's going to take the most restrictive conditions we have from all the operation conditions we have here. What is the meaning of this? Let's take this example exactly. Let's assume that we have a block here, and we are producing this well for the platform. And we are imposing exactly this solution. What the simulator will try to do? It's going to try to calculate this uh, input, for example, this boundary condition here, 20,000. So in the first iteration, you're going to try to produce the first condition here, which is 20,000. And then it's going to calculate in the bottom hole pressure. If the bottom hole pressure is below 1,000, for example, let's assume it calculates in the first iteration that is 8,300. 8, then it's going to observe that this is below our restriction. So it's going to change the boundary condition to the second boundary condition imposed here. So it's going to use this in the second iteration, the bottom of pressure as our boundary condition of, of 1,000. And then it's going to calculate the rate, which is, let's assume, 15,000. OK, this is below uh, 20,000. So it is OK. So it's going to impose the second boundary condition. So what the simulator will do, it will try to impose the first one and we will observe the others. If any of the other is below the value that the maximum or minimum limits, they're going to change to the other and check the others again until it gets the most restrictive boundary conditions imposed to the wells. So in this case, in this example, would be the 1,000 1, PSI of uh, boundary condition, and then it's going to operate in this in, in this condition here. Okay, uh, and sometimes this is a little bit confused because we can put a lot of operating conditions here, and the simulator will calculate the most restrictive. So in, in practice, we don't know exactly what is going to happen. There are some ways. For example, it's very common that the well in the beginning is producing a lot, then after some time, it changed the boundary conditions from one condition to another. For example, it, let's assume that in the beginning, I have pressure enough to produce 20,000. So I'm going to produce the first time step. The, for example, I produce here, the BHP was uh, 500. In the second time step, the BHP was 700. Then I produce here 800. Then here 900. Then I, I would produce here would be 1,100. Then it's, it's, it's above these limits. Then it changed the boundary conditions. And now the new boundary conditions pressure. That's why we change in this point here. We change from rates, informed rates, to informed BHP. Okay. And again, if I have an injector and the pressure keeps increasing, 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 maybe I can go back to the most restrictive, which is 20,000 and so on. And also I can put here maximum liquid rate, maximum water rate, and so on. I can put several operates, and the simulator will operate in the most restrictive way, OK? I hope it was clear. If it was not clear, please let me know, OK? 
And to be a little bit more complicated, we have also other keywords that we, we can use in the first in the forecast mode. That is not about restrictions, but is about the way we want to operate the well, how the company will operate the well. For example, there are some examples here. Uh, I can monitor some variables and do some actions if these uh, variables occur. For example, I can monitor the oil rates, saying that if the oil rates reach this minimum value of a thousand, I'm gonna stop the simulator, or I'm gonna close the well, or I'm gonna close the valve, or there are several actions I can take here, okay? So these monitors are different from this operation. Now, this operation is, restrict is related to restrictions, and these monitors are related to the management of the well. So, in other words, there are actions that are taken if some things happen. In this case, for example, the company can say if the minimum rate is a thousand, uh, I'm operating in a, a negative net present value, so I'm going to stop the simulator because I don't want to produce anymore, or I don't, or I want to close that well because it's, the rate is too low for a well. I'm going to produce other wells and so on. So we can monitor several variables and then we can do several actions to, according to this. For example, if we're having black flow, so if as a producer that's injecting, we also can stop or can close the, the well. We can monitor water cut, we can monitor GOR, we can monitor several variables here and saying that we are gonna do some actions if these monitor variables occur, okay? So this is the basic difference uh, from the treatment from the uh, history modes, history matching mode and forecast mode, okay? In the history matching mode, we impose one boundary condition. We calculate the other boundary conditions. We compare to the boundary conditions that were measured, and then we do the history matching for that part. In the future, we have to impose all the physical restrictions we have put in this operation. Remember, this is an example for the for IMAX, but the other simulators have similar behavior. They have restrictions. And be aware that the well is operating in the most restrictive condition. And also, we can impose several things to manage the well the best way we can. And here is not very easy in the beginning when you are using simulator for the first time, but we have to imagine how the company will manage it the wells and the platforms and the manifolds and so on. And we can impose all these minimum rates, maximum rates, maximum water cuts, minimum water cuts. And for each monitor, we have a, a value, a limited value and an action, so, right? And you have a list of the values and the and actions you can have on, on in the, the manual of the simulators as well, okay? Any question? Okay, with this, I think we complete explaining what's inside the simulator. Of course, we had to do this in three classes, which is very fast. But I hope I was able to give you at least the basic idea on how a black oil simulator works. And uh, from this point on, there are a lot of complexities that you can have, but you have to learn in our real day-to-day -day life in the company. Maybe you have to use a compositional simulator, then you have to study a little bit the difference between the black oil and simulators. Basic difference, I told you, is uh, the black oil is much faster because, the, well, the phase behavior is just a table. We have to go there in the table and see how the property is changing with pressure. And the composition, there is a thermodynamic behavior that we have to include in the equations. So they are a little bit more complex to solve and a little bit more equations because we have to solve for more equations. But the basic idea is the same. The conversion is the same. The well treatment is the same. The control of time step is the same. All the rest that I told you here is the same. Of course, you have to use a thermal model the same. You have to use a, additional equations for a, account for the difference in temperature and so on. But the basic idea uh, I hope you, you got from this, that's how are the simula simulation equations, how they are solved, how we treat the wells, and some of the options we have. Of course, nowadays we have some other options like IM automatic, the, the control of time step is automatic. Uh, many simulations have the, the grid refinement automatic as well, as I told you two classes ago. 
I didn't talk too much about this because the, this is not very efficient yet in the versions we have today, right? Uh, uh, what this does, it, it automatically refines the grids to where we have higher changes, impressions, saturations. But the, the simulations you have today, this, the time they spent doing these calculations is almost the same time as, the, as we saw the, the fine model or a, a fine refinement. So they are not very effective today. So that's I, I didn't explain too much in this course. Okay. And one of the most important things is the well behavior. This is very important, not only because if we change the well properties, we change a lot the production and injection behavior, but also because there are many options that I try to give you some example here in the history mode and forecast mode that we have to study very carefully the manuals to see how the simulators operate and how we're going to manage the, the, the wells and so on. Okay. So, with that, I conclude the, the, this, these classes that give you. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to interrupt the, the 